So it has been about one year since I uploaded my top 10 Linux applications for the year 2020 video. And over the last year, there has been a lot of updates, some things have changed, and some new applications have come across my desktop. So I thought now was a good time to bring up my new top 10 Linux applications list going into the year 2021. So I will note while I'm going through these applications real quick, uh, this isn't in any specific order. This is just kind of how I happen to have written this list. And coming in at number one is LibreWolf. Now, LibreWolf is a wonderful web browser. It is a fork of Firefox, uh, Mozilla Firefox, but this focuses more on security and privacy. As of late, a lot of people have been kind of switching away from Chromium-based web browsers because of what they're doing to uh, Google Sync features in some of those Chromium-based web browsers. And LibreWolf is a really good option, especially if you want those enhanced security features, or if you don't really like the general direction or the politics of uh, Mozilla itself. This is a good one. It has an ad blocker built in. DuckDuckGo is the default search engine. It is completely free and open source like everything else we're gonna be talking about today. Personally, I've been using this hand in hand with Firefox. So I use Firefox for doing things that I trust and that I need to stay logged into, such as being on YouTube, Reddit, things like that. And I use this web browser if I'm doing any type of research or I'm going to websites I don't really trust or have ever been to, or even something like banking where I do need to log in but I don't want it to keep me logged in. This is a really good web browser for that and I would highly recommend everybody go and check it out. So next, coming in at number two on our list is Joplin. What Joplin is is a wonderful note-taking application for Linux. I made a video on BoostNote a little while ago which is kind of set up very similar to this. But this overall has more features and has much better syncing capabilities. Just like BoostNote, it has both rich text, so this is a full rich text editor. With your uh, notebooks over here, you have your various pages or articles or whatever you want to call it right here. And if you go ahead and click this button, you have a full side-by-side -side markdown editor with previews over here. I've been using this a lot to write the uh, articles for techhut.tv, as well as just take general notes. You can see over here, this is a more markdown example. So you have your bolding, you have your links, you have your pictures enabled here. Uh, it really, really helps you if you do work in markdown. But like I said, if you don't work in markdown, you have your general rich text editing. If you do anything such as go to school or you just need a really good place to store your notes, this is a really, really good option, and I do recommend you go ahead and check it out. And that brings us to number three. Now, I'm not going to get really into this application because I don't want to show you all my usernames and passwords, but that is Bitwarden. Bitwarden is a wonderful password manager, and that is for a couple of reasons. One, it's a little bit more secure than some of the other uh, password managers out there. Uh, it does end-to-end -end encryption and it's completely free and open source so you could actually go ahead and audit the code and go through and see exactly what is going on uh, like i said all the data is encrypted so if you do use the uh, bitwarden servers it's probably going to be fine but being that it's open source and they follow that principle you can actually host your very own bitwarden instance on a home server if you don't trust sending it to some other server that you don't know you could host the entire bitwarden service in your own home for your own passwords. It's really, really cool, and I actually do plan on setting that up soon on like a Raspberry Pi or something like that. That's gonna be a really, really fun project. And speaking of there, there's a lot of uh, browser plugins, so that's the main use for this. You can manage it on your Linux machine in its own application that you see here, but the plugins are awesome, and it has a plugin for LibreWolf as well. So if it does log you out all the time that you want to use that as your main web browser, using something like Bitwarden paired with LibreWolf is a really, really good combination. So moving on from LibreWolf, we have KDE Connect. Now I don't have my phone on, so I can't really show you a live preview here, but basically KDE Connect allows you to completely connect your uh, phone to your computer. You can do things like transfer files, send text messages, you could use your phone to execute commands on your computer or even control it with kind of like a uh, laptop touchpad type thing. It's really, really cool. And if you have a phone and you have the capability to run KDE Connect, you won't ever need to plug in your com your phone to the computer unless if you want to use that to charge it. I know I've used KDE Connect a lot just to use the kind of ping, find my phone thing, which makes my phone go off. It's very, very handy, especially for somebody like me who loses things all the time. 
Before I got this camera, I would use KDE Connect to transfer video files because I used to use my cell phone to record all my videos, but I don't have to now. Well, this is almost more difficult than using KDE Connect and moving files that way. But uh, KDE Connect, if you have a cell phone and you have a Linux desktop, you're really doing yourself a disservice not using that. And with that said, the next application on our list is Mailspring. Now, as of recently, Mailspring has become completely free and open source software. Mailspring is a professional email client that tops off its professionalism and beauty with excellent features. Some features that I've been using so much I can't really live without them. Now that I've gotten used to them, particularly the integrated read receipts as well as the link tracking. Now the link tracking is on your end, so when you send something off to somebody that has links, you can actually see whether or not if they've actually clicked on those links. Now this application for me is so good that I actually removed the email applications off my phone just so I don't accidentally send something off and I'm not able to use those read receipt features. And plus it does limit the notifications I'm getting on my phone now, so that's just an added plus. Uh, you saw on the screen I have a separate video going over this in more, more detail. That video and any other thing I mention in this video will be linked down in the description below. Now, speaking of things I've done other videos on, we have BPYTOP. What this is, is by far my favorite system monitoring tool. Uh, HTOP used to be my favorite, but now it is by far this one, particularly because it is absolutely beautiful. You can see here, I have all my CPU cores here. You have this nice looking graph so you can actually see a history of how your system has been performing, as well as you have all your temperatures here so you can actually see if your CPU can cook an egg or not. If you go down here, you have all your memory, you have your network so you can see what's going on, upload, download uh, on your machine. And with all those monitoring tools, you have what you'd expect out of a normal task manager, such as all these different tasks that we could go ahead and go through. There's sorting features you could kill and terminate various processes on your machine. Anything that you'd expect out of a task manager system monitor, anything like that you can find in this. And on top of everything, it just looks cool. I always have it running up on my top monitor up there off to the side so I could kind of see what's going on. It is definitely a must have, especially if you're looking for something that has a little bit more um, dazzle than something like HTOP. So let's go ahead and close this out and talk about number seven on our list, which is Lutris. Lutris is definitely a must have if you want to do any gaming on your Linux machine. If you're a gamer at all, Lutris is awesome because it takes a vast majority, probably 95% or more of those Windows only games and makes it really easy to run on a Linux machine. Lutris will bring everything that you need together such as custom wine configurations and other dependencies that before you would have needed to go and set up manually. You can go on the Lutris website and skim over the 13,000 entries of games to see if the game that you want to play is compatible with Lutris and Linux. And on those specific game pages, you can see a rating so you can know how well it will run as well as just some general information on the game. Now this application combined with Steam and Proton is definitely a must have, especially if you are a gamer. And that takes us to number eight on our list and that is the Fluent RSS Reader. Now, I did a whole video on this and I kind of explained how I'm usually not a reader of RSS feeds, but ever since I started using this application, this is one of the very first things I open up every morning when I first boot up my computer. You can see it's absolutely beautiful. It lets you read articles from all your favorite websites really, really well. It has different viewing options so you can view the actual websites. And there's a wide variety of settings and organizational tools that you can use to get to all your various uh, articles that you actually want to read. It is awesome. Anybody who consumes any articles or blogs or anything on the internet should be running this application because it just combines everything into one. And then you don't have to kind of skim through all your book bookmarks to see all the content that you want to see. And with that said, we're going to go ahead and jump to number nine on our list down here which is the Oracle VM Virtual Box. Now, I've been using this application ever since I was in probably middle school to just try out and play with various operating systems. Even on this YouTube channel, if you go back to, I think it's my second video I ever uploaded nearly 10 years ago, it's actually a tutorial on how to use VirtualBox to install Ubuntu. It's 
pretty cool to look back. I sound like a little kid. So, I'm gonna be doing this via a ISO file. You can um, yeah. <laughs> But out of all the other virtualization tools on Linux, VirtualBox is probably the easiest to use, the most functional, the easiest to set up. It is the best when it comes to virtualization. As a tool for education, if you're anybody interested in uh, technology, computers, operating system software, coding, anything, it is definitely a tool that you need to have to be able to educate yourself on various distributions, operating systems. It's great to use to be able to test applications and things like that, or just experiment with desktop environments and stuff that you may want to try out on your actual hardware. Additionally, it's probably one of the better ways to run Windows applications on Linux if you absolutely need to, because if your system can handle it as far as specification goes, uh, you could go ahead and load a Windows VM and run Photoshop or whatever it is that you need to run. Uh, if you want to do that for all the applications, it's not really worth it, but it is a really good tool if you need to jump into Windows every once in a while r while running Linux as your primary machine. So with that said, uh, VirtualBox is my personal number one favorite application ever. Now before we talk about our very last application, I'm going to give you some honorable mentions real quick. Didn't quite make the list. Uh, the first one is this right here. This is the library video client. Uh, this allows you to watch videos on Library and Odyssey. They're the same kind of base, but different faces. Uh, it's really, really nice. I use it all the time, primarily to watch the my favorite uh, Linux YouTubers. I have a library account as well, so if you want to go ahead and subscribe to me there, that would be cool. But I use it. You can see kind of who I'm subscribed to on here. Uh, Luke, uh, Brody, I have DistroTube down here, uh, Chris Titus Tech. All the good stuff is right here. And you could go through your tags. Who you're following you can discover new content through here library is an awesome video platform and a really good alternative to youtube if that's what you're looking for so that is one of my honorable mentions another one is krita i didn't include this because i included gimp last time and they do do different things but krita is more focused on somebody people who actually have uh, artistic talent so this is a good drawing application while GIMP is a pretty good like graphic design utility. But Krita is a really, really good one you should check out, especially if you're art artistic in the slightest. Go ahead and download Krita. It is awesome. So now that will take us to number 10 on our list, and that is Ardor. Now Ardor is a highly advanced uh, sound editor and production tool. Now, I've primarily spent most of my time in Audacity, which is an incredibly simple, well, it has a lot of features, but for what I need to use it for, it is an incredibly simple sound recorder and editing tool. But recently, I've been using Ardor a lot more for even my basic needs of simple monotone talking. Um, overall, it has a non-destructive editing principle, so that's really nice. Just the tools are much easier to use than Audacity and it's much easier to actually balance out audio levels. So even for stuff that I do, which is very simple, it has some great functionality and a really good use case. But as far as sound production and sound editing, I'm not the professional. I'd recommend you go check out, I think it's Unfa, Unfa, sorry, uh, U-N-F-A. I'd recommend you check out his channel. He has a tons, of, tons of great uh, art art tutorials and other sound editing and production videos based around Linux and free and open source software. Go check out his stuff. It is awesome. So I do hope this video did help you discover an application or two that you did not know about before. And like I said, please do check out the other top 10 list because there are some wonderful applications on there, as well as my top, uh, I think it's seven awesome term terminal based applications for Linux. That's another great video with some great tools if you're interested in working more in the terminal. But with all that said, I do want to thank my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, there'll be a link down in the description. If not, that is more than fine. Simply giving this video a like and leaving a comment down below with what some of your favorite Linux applications are, especially if I didn't mention them. I love to find and discover new applications, especially free and open source software. Also, be sure you are subscribed and you ring that bell so you are notified when this channel uploads new content. So, I do hope you have a beautiful day, and goodbye.